welcome back, ladies. I'm so happy to see you again. It's been a long time. <laughs> nice to be here. Yeah. yeah it's really great. And uh, uh, since we are heading um, straight toward Christmas, I was thinking I would like to talk to you about how, how to survive Christmas, <laughs> how to stay abstinent. I remember my first Christmas or uh, the whole first year really when I was uh, sugar-free and abstinent and I felt like, uh, well, I kind of felt naked. I don't know. I didn't know what to do and how to celebrate and how to uh, be around people and so on. And uh, I was so afraid to go back to overeating or eating sugar and flour and so on. And uh, I thought maybe we could chat about it and, and see if we can come up with some tips how to to stay sugar sober really yeah I think that's a good idea yeah so I can definitely start uh because that's what I like to do yeah <laughs> <laughs> so we, you know I thought I was like ho ho hold the sugar let's get into this mm -hmm. I find that the holidays are completely focused on food and we really need to see Christmas Day, Christmas Eve, Boxing Day, New Year's Day as just another day. So what are the day things we do in each day that are really keep us strong in our sobriety? So maybe that's reaching out to someone who is an accountability person. Maybe it's getting that exercise in in the morning. So just because it's Christmas Day, it's still really important for us to do these things, but also to know what we're walking into, right? It's just, it's just another day, but it's really important we have have a plan. And so that might mean know where you're going, know what food's going to be served there, know if you have to bring something, know if you should eat something abstinent before, have like a response ready for if somebody's trying to give you some food that is not on your plan, you know, a uh, simple no thank you, you know, I don't eat sugar, I'm sweet enough, whatever, if you want to make it funny, or, you know, some people get a little defensive when you say you don't eat sugar, so you just say, oh, you know, that these haven't, I haven't been feeling well, whatever makes you feel most comfortable, but just have something ready, because that will be easier to think of in the moment when it's offered to you, and you know, I really think that always bringing your own food to events, whether you need to pull it out or not, keep it in the car for most people or in a cooler. So you have it just in case. And, you know, also to maybe have an idea of like, if there's nothing there I can eat and I've eaten something before, have a plan for something after and maybe, you know, set a time limit on how much you are exposed to these you know, cues. Do you really want to set yourself up to be exposed to these drug foods all day long? Is there ways that you can step away and take time for self-care during these events? And just, you know, be, practice being mindful and present in the moment. And if you catch yourself ruminating on some of these foods or the cookies that are over there, step away, go in the bathroom, do 10 deep breaths just to bring yourself back because that's when we bring ourselves back to that safer place in our head. And so also, you know, leading up to these events, watch out for the internal triggers as well, like the stress, the tired, you know, overwhelmed, like running around getting gifts for everyone, not looking after ourselves. We need, that's just as important before the holidays as the day of, and definitely just important, as important after we were just talking in our sweet sobriety group about, you know, the come down from the holidays, you're hyper vigilant all day long on the day of the event. That's when your, you know, disease is really open for a vulnerable moment that next day when you're like, I made it through. And then you just put that ease down. So I will stop talking and go ahead, Molly. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I don't know that I have anything different to add to like the day of, I think it's also the time of year where there's lots of holiday parties or, you know, our employers are providing holiday parties, the schools are putting on programs, whatever it might be, um, you know, PTAs and teachers association, right? Like there's just so much food and it's not even like that it's real whole food. It's the garbage it's the treats it's the special items that you can only get this time of year and I think the disease really likes that so I would say you know just to be mindful of that too you know um I, I work with a lot of people who are in the medical professions and it's horrendous this time of year mm -hmm. and so we've talked about 
bringing towels to, um, or finding towels to cover things in the break rooms or putting them in cupboards or, you know, just stashing them away while they're trying to have their break or take their meals in their vehicles or a different part of the the building where, wherever you need to go, you know, again, it doesn't have to be like this forever, but this time of year, it might be something that we have to do. I think the other thing too, is when we focus on all the things we can't have, it grows that lack mentality, right? And then that's, again, another pathway, another activator for that disease. And I always, you know, I, I've told people for years, I call it the toddler in my head, but that's just what I tell you guys that it's called, you know, in my head, it's the wham, wham, pee, pee, bedwetter. Like, so when wham, wham, pee, pee, bedwetter shows up because I can't have this and I can't have that now I'm miserable, right? Like that's that willful suffering. Like I'm miserable because all I can think about is what I can't have. And so I've really been working on, so with the, in the sugar sober support group that I do on Fridays, but also then in sweet sobriety and working with clients one-on-one, we've really been talking about creating new traditions. You know, this is the time of year. If you live in a snowy place, like get out and go sledding, go find a sledding hill, go ice skating, go snowshoeing, go try skiing, cross country, Nordic, downhill, whatever. Like, even if you have to travel somewhere to go do that, even if it's just a few hours away, be willing to show up and try new things so that you can focus more on this abundance, all these things that are available to you to do that doesn't revolve around the food. And then definitely take what Clarissa was saying and and protect yourself that way. I mean, this year I declined going to my husband's, uh, employer's Christmas party because last year, you know, I, I know what happened last year and every year is a little different, but this year it is plan. It's looking like it's going to be the same as it was last year. And last year I made it through and that's fine. And I'm several years into my journey, so I don't feel super wobbly, but I'm also like, mm, I can, I don't have to attend that this year. You know, I can leave that. I can do something else instead. He can go to the, to it and I'll go do something else. And it's totally fine. So I think it's, just being willing to like show up and say, you know, what is best for me right now? Like what gets me closer to what I actually want, which is abstinence and recovery. So, I mean, I think that's what I would have to add to the conversation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's great. I'm, I'm standing here thinking that there are so many different parts. I mean, uh, for me, it's definitely, it's like, you know, focusing on what I can add, uh, not only, um, um, regarding the food, but in life. I mean, before I was, you know, hovering around the food, the, the sweets and, and everything, you know, just, you know, putting something on my plate and thinking, well, maybe someone is noticing what I'm eating. So I'm sneaking away, eating somewhere else. And then I'm coming back and, you know, all the circus going around uh, um, this food table. <laughs> but nowadays I'm able to uh, be part of uh, being helpful if, if someone needs to, um, I mean, turn the table or anything or, or uh, put things on the table. And also I'm being able to be with my family. Like you said, Molly, you know, going out or um, ice skiing or going with, the, with my horses together with my, my daughter or whatever, you know, just being there. And the food is something I need to take care of to be sure that I have something to eat, which is for me. And uh, I mean, plan, plan my food and know what to do, like you said, Clarissa, around the food, but then there is so much life to, to fill with joy and, and presence and, and presence, maybe, <laughs> I mean, this time of year. And I'm so grateful, you know, going from this focus when everything was about the food and, and how to eat, how much to eat, what not to eat. And, and if somebody's watching me as if they were and so on. <laughs> So that's a big change. And um, I'm also thinking that what that one thing that is when I went from focusing before I was able to really start focusing on my family for real and being there with my whole person, I thought it was very difficult sometimes to attend family meetings. Uh, so that's also something that I need to address when I when I go away, I need to be sure like Clarissa said, I have someone to reach out to. Can I give a call? Can I uh, hide in the bathroom for a while or breathe or whatever? You know, I love my family and I enjoy being together with them. But sometimes I just need to connect with myself or my HP or whatever, you know, just to uh, to lend so that I'm able to attend and be part of the community or the family or or whatever. 
because um, really here in Sweden, we have like, uh, uh, when we get together and celebrate Christmas, it's uh, a lot of good food also. It's like a smorgasbord when we have a lot of uh, good meat and, and everything, but there are also a lot of food, not for me. <laughs> so to be able to focus on the good food and be grateful that that really is there. And like you said, Clarice, also uh, you, uh, sometimes I also have uh, food in the in the car if I'm not if I don't know it, what to eat and so on. I know that I have a safety plan, kind of. Uh, so that's really great. So, but if you would have like uh, top three that you need to do before Christmas and then after Christmas. Um, like you both were saying, when you land and when you kind of finally, I made it, I mean, how do you uh, um, pull yourself together or stay uh, stay steady when, when it's all over? What's the top three for, for you? So I think top three before would be for sure, making sure that I am not skipping any meals that I'm doing like my regular three meals a day, you know, protein, carbohydrates, being vegetables and fat, um, making some space and time for quiet because it tends to be a very loud, noisy time and busy. And we, I find we can get a addicted to the busy and then we neglect ourselves. So I think when we're able to get quiet, we can kind of figure out what we need. Sleep, number one thing I would say, sleep, that's in the top three for first and for after, because, you know, entertaining all of that, it's for us, we tend to, with addiction, be very sensitive people. And we take on a lot of the energies in the room, whether positive or negative. And so I think that takes a lot out of us. And so, you know, having that time allotted for just to breathe and kind of, you know, revive, because there's going to be more, it tends to be that period from like the 24th to like January 2nd, where it's still just go, go, go. So, you know, if you want to show up and still be your best recovered self, you need to recoup. And again, you know, even though I may not feel like doing it, um, for me, exercise puts me in that frame of mind. And so, like Molly said, I'm going to take this time to get outside and play because, you know, these, uh, this is an opportunity that I don't always have because I'm usually visiting uh, or seeing clients or, you know, your days are occupied. So get outside, spend some time outside. The sun hopefully will be shining. And uh, yeah, that would be my recruit. But of course, I would also say just to have that constant accountability buddy or recovery person. You don't need necessarily need to be struggling, but just send them a picture of your Christmas tree, send a picture of the family celebrating, you know, just that reminder that this is, you know, we are in recovery because I always say this is the disease makes us forget we have a disease and in all that hustle and bustle, it can get noisy. And, you know, so even just to stay connected, I think that that's another excellent tip for the holidays. Yes, sure is. Thank you. And what about you, Molly? Yeah, I would say, so this is for, some of these tips are for people who maybe are abstinent from the foods that light up their brain like a Christmas tree, but they're still struggling with the volume part. Um, you know, something that I started practicing early November, just as an experiment, um, and I found that it was super helpful is, um, you know, I thought about what are the flavors that I, you know, think that I miss at that holiday time, right? And around American Thanksgiving, it's pumpkin. So I started having two ounces of pumpkin in my breakfast every morning for the whole month of November. So when it came to Thanksgiving, it wasn't a special flavor. So when people were eating a certain treat with that in there, I wasn't missing it. So I was like, eh, I had it in my breakfast this morning. I don't need any more. It's fine. Right. So, so there wasn't, again, there wasn't like this lack thing. It was like taking the power out of it by having that. So thinking about that, you know, if, if there's a sweet potato dish or something, allow yourself some sweet potato each day between now and then, if that works for you, you know, if that's part of your plan or whatever. So something along those lines, just start taking the power out of those things. So you don't feel like you have to overdo it the day of, and then you're feeling bad about the volume piece, you know, and we talk a lot about that one plate 
rule of like, you know, I may not be weighing and measuring in front of everybody, but I'm going to stick to my one plate. So I would say that would be kind of my first thing. I think my second thing is that I stay, like Clarissa was saying, staying connected. I'm still going to go to the meetings that I go to. I'm still going to host the meetings that I host. I'm still going to continue to see clients because this disease does not stop just because it's the holidays. I'm going to stay connected with Clarissa, even if I know that she's busy and I know she's not going to respond, I'm still going to send her messages because it helps me to be able to put it out there like, oh, somebody's going to see it and ask me about it later. And and how do I want to feel when she asks me about it? You know, and I think the third thing is, is that I've really moved out of this mind space of like, oh, I just have to get through Christmas. I just have to get through the new year because I feel like that's very diet mentality. Oh, I just have to make it to the trip to Cancun and then I can eat whatever I want. You know, I think the more we can just be intentional and say like, there is actually no end date. I don't just have to make it through Christmas. Christmas is just another day. I just have to keep going. Like this isn't ending. And I think the more that I've learned to shift my perspective that way, the less I have of that come down effect, like there's still going to be the come down effect because of, you know, anxiety and other things, you know, that come along with holidays and being around family members that were not around all the time and people being packed into houses and, and personalities and all of that kind of stuff. But I think the more we can take the power out of it and write a different story about it, I think we, we have less, um, I guess, vulnerability to falling into that trap. So I, I would say those are my three. What about, what about you, Annika? What do you think? Uh, well, <clears throat> I'm, I'm really into this, that, that you both mentioned about, you know, uh, Christmas, uh, uh, um, Christmas Eve or Christmas day. It's only a day. I mean, even it, just somebody put a, a label on it, but it's still a day kind of. So uh, I really need to stick to my routines, you know, get up the approximately the same time because I love being alone in the morning. So I'll pray and I meditate and I read something. And usually I reach out to someone who's crazy enough to go up at, at 5 a.m. also. <laughs> and I text someone or I call someone. Uh, and then I... But uh, that, and, and I'm really grateful for all my animals because they kind of uh, get me going in my routines all the day. Uh, and also about the planning. I mean, uh, keeping my routine in routines and, and planning and doing this before Christmas or whatever. And also when I'm kind of landed, because uh, nowadays it's not. Uh, for me, it's more. Uh, if I'm going on a vacation or I'm uh, traveling or something, when I get back home, then I have to really be careful. But now I kind of passed a, a, a lot of Christmas Eves and so on. So now I'm kind of, you know, just keeping my routines. I think that's the most important thing, things because I have a lot of routines. <laughs> so planning and keeping my routines and, um, and sleep, resting is, is uh, also on top, but that's really something that I'm struggling with because I tend to over, overdo things, work too much or care for everyone too much or whatever. <laughs> so that I need to take care of. But I was also thinking when we were talking about routines and sleep and everything, uh, New Year's Eve, celebrating New Year's, staying up until 12 o'clock, that is still really really dangerous for me because i i'm you know the first of january i go i wake up and i'm like whoa that was a piece of cake you know i can do it i can be up to 12 o'clock every evening or you know every night and then the day after like the 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 second of january i'm like oh my god why did i do that you know so the last couple of years <clears throat> i've been the most boring person on the earth and i'm like well, it's nine o'clock. Oh, happy new year. I'm going to sleep, you know. <laughs> See you in the morning. It's a new year. Well, I tried to cook something nice and, and uh, eat dinner together with the family and so on. But I really kind of stopped celebrating New Year's Eve because I'm getting too tired and I'm being a mess for almost a week afterwards when I don't go to sleep. And I know I, I've spoken to a lot of people that really think this is so boring and they feel like they're a boring person and you know uh um what is the a party pooper kind of because they don't uh they don't attend or whatever 
Would you like to give me some thoughts on that? <laughs> Yeah, I say I'm all for it. You know, I, I do the exact same thing. I mean, obviously I struggled with alcohol before. So ringing in the new year was one of the most favorite things to do because you're drinking. And then I went to working in a shelter on New Year's Eve, just as that reminder to see, you know, individuals coming in struggling with alcoholism at that point. And it's, it's really, you know, it's, it's not a life I miss anymore. And this new life that I have, I love it so much. So I just get these like most delicious steaks. Like I go all out, get a beautiful, expensive dinner and just enjoy a great meal great company. And that's enough. Like, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. If you want to like have your own little fake celebration at 9 p.m., I'm good with that. I probably might already be asleep at 9 p.m. And I feel no way about it. <laughs> because I'm going to get up the next day. I'm going to go skiing. I'm going to do all these things. Because before, you know, it's was if it's not a sleep hangover it was a food hangover or it was an alcohol hangover and that's not how I want to start my new year I want to start it off with the right on the right foot so I I would agree with you 100 percent I I think when I was younger I had that fear of missing out but I don't experience it that anymore because I love this life so much what about you Molly yeah I mean I would love to say it's just another day in our household but it's actually my youngest birthday. She was born on December 31st. Oh. So there's a little bit of celebration that day, but I, I mean, she'll be six, right? So it's not like any, she's still going to bed at her time, which is eight o'clock. And you know, it's funny because really thinking about this and, and my routine is by eight o'clock, I'm not like in bed, in bed, but I'm kind of done, right? Like it's now wind down time because I want to be in bed asleep by 9 30, 10 o'clock, which means I'm not getting ready to go out on the town or stay up to watch the ball drop. Although where I live, I'm two hours behind New York. So I could do that and it would only be 10 PM. So it, you know, it's, it's a little less crazy for me if I did that, but, um, you know, but I always think about what is really, what are you really going to accomplish between 8 p.m. and midnight that you haven't already had the opportunity to do all day long prior to that? And just like you said, Clarissa, like go to sleep on time, get up and start your next day and do the things you would have done anyway, right? Like you're going to have more quality interactions, you know, maybe even like volunteer opportunities, whatever it might be, those quality things are going to happen during our normal circadian rhythm waking hours. And we're going to be better people for it because we're not going to be tired. We're not going to be grumpy. We're not going to be going to be forcing ourselves into something that isn't already a part of our, our routine. And yeah, I think it's, you know, it's dangerous territory. That's, that's time and night when people, right. It's a return to old behavior. That's when people would binge watch TV and binge eat the foods and, and hide and stay and eat in bed and right all it's just it's inviting all the old behaviors to return you know so if this is year one for you this is the first time you know your first holiday season trying to be sober and in recovery you know really think about that like does that behavior serve you and it doesn't necessarily have to be that for like that way forever maybe 10 years from now you can do that or two years from now but does that work for you this year you know, whatever that may mean for you. So yeah, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's a really interesting question. And I think New Year's is often one that we overlook. So thanks for posing that. Yeah, I really wasn't thinking about it. You know, when I, when I reached out to you and I was like, well, let's talk about Christmas. And then I realized whilst we were talking, but what about New Year? I mean, that's really dangerous for me. And I'm also thinking, you know, my kids are older and they want to stay up until 12 o'clock. So I'm kind of, you know, well, should I be awake with them? But it's just like you said, Molly, they, this is a time when we usually kind of binge eat or drink, binge drink, <laughs> if we drink alcohol or watch TV or whatever. And that's not quality time with my kids anyway, uh, unless we're not watching Harry Potter. Uh, <laughs> uh, that would be nice though. Uh, but I mean, I really want to be a good mother for my kids and staying awake, I mean, three more hours and being a wreck for two days, that's not quality time with my kids. But if I'm, you know, having a good time in the evening, eating something good together with them, being together with them, go to sleep, and then I can be there 
uh, the other days afterwards also that's to me that's much better but um i really did some new year use the when i stayed up and i tried to be i tried to be normal i always said i mean what's normal but i tried to keep doing these um uh, these uh, celebrations the way that i used to do it but i'm thinking also as i'm getting sugar sober or or abstinent or, or whatever you like to call it I also have the opportunity to rebuild my celebration with everything. I can celebrate uh, Christmas in a new way. I can celebrate uh, New Year in, in a new way, and so on. I can kind of build the life around all these holidays that I that I like and the way that that makes me able to attend in life, rather just than just feeling that I'm being thrown, you know, between people or places or things or whatever, and don't being in charge of my own life. So it's an opportunity, and I'm I really uh, uh, I think I ha I do it several times a day when I'm thinking I have the opportunity opportunity to choose. I can choose to think positive. I can choose to be happy. I can choose to stay stop to something. I can choose what kind of food that I'm eating. But if I'm back in the food and binge eating or or eating sugar and flour and so on, I don't have a choice anymore that's where it ends for me kind of so yeah uh, yeah i also just wanted to add one thing because i know this has come up for a lot of my clients when they were talking about christmas celebrations and it being their first christmas there may be that one treat that your mom has always made or it's a cultural treat that is just you're already in fear of it have that conversation prior and just really get vulnerable and just ask for it not to be there this year, it being your first year. And just explain, you know, if you were trying to be alcohol free, would you want alcohol at this event? And that it's the same, it feels the same for you. Because if you're already going in with this one item in mind of the thing you're never going to have, you're just, it's really starting to set you up for failure. So definitely, you know, if anyone, like just ask for that respect to say, hey, you know, I know this is a tradition that we have. Can we just maybe this year, can you just not bring it? And, you know, maybe you can do it on another day or give them, give it to the kids or the families like in a different way, but just not, I, it'll be ch challenging for me that day. So just have that conversation. Great, great. I think another thing that comes up for me this time of year too is Right now, we're very vulnerable for many reasons. One, we're trying to be sober in recovery, whatever, and it is like nothing but junk food season, right? The diet industry and diet culture is preying on you. Gyms are giving discounts. People are saying, try my diet, do this, that, and the other thing. And I, I've been working with clients a lot and, and just reminding them, like, you do not have to wait until the new year to start, first and foremost. Like, let's just get that out of the way. There's nothing special about January 1st that couldn't be true today. But also, you know, don't buy into this industry that preys on your resolutions, right? How many people set resolutions? And I looked up the statistics one time, and it's an incredible amount of people that actually within three weeks, I think it's like more than 50% of people within three weeks. I mean, you haven't even made it out of January yet, and you've already decided those just aren't for me. I've thrown in the towels, slash all the other tires, you know, whatever it might be. And so, you know, in that, especially when we're trying to recover from the disease of addiction can really impact our self-esteem and the, you know, the obsessive thoughts and the intrusive thoughts and the inner critic, it all comes to play. And um, so I've really been encouraging people don't buy into that. If you, you know what I mean? Like just plug your ears, la, 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 you know, keep your blinders on. Um, and don't worry about resolutions this year. Something that I found five years ago that I really like doing is I pick a word for the year, right? So this year, my word was, a, was um, advance. And ever since January 1, like my, my goal has been to advance others in the field, the, the, you know, recovery language that food addiction is real. Um, people in my life in any way, shape, or form, myself, my children, my husband, right? I've found different ways each day. So I've found that when I have this word, it's almost like I make decisions. I'm like, how does this advance somebody or something, an idea, a belief, or whatever, 
right? And I found that I have, I can sit here on December 10th and say, I'm still sticking to that where before when I would have these resolutions of I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to work out X amount of times a week at the gym, whatever that would have been gone within weeks. So I don't know. I mean, what are you, what are your guys' thoughts on resolutions and how do you, you know, what would you want people to hear about resolutions? Like, what do you think would be helpful to the people who are watching this when it comes to this time of year being preyed upon, (laughs) you know, let me help you lose weight. Um, you know, whatever it might be. Wow. Would you like to go ahead, Clarissa? Sure, I could go. I well, I picked up on what Molly did last year because I was uh I'm gonna be 42 uh in two days, and I think I failed 41 or no 41 resolutions, probably, because even in sobriety, I still set them, whether it's like work out five days a week or you know, this year I'm gonna not eat this particular food. What you know, it's just it's always something, and it really instead of focusing on the things I can't do. I love that mindset of a more positive approach of all the things I can do this year and not making it an everyday thing, but something that over the course of a year, I would like to encourage more of in my life rather than just making it this one thing and putting all this power in this one thing. And I have found that to be extremely helpful because I think it's exactly as Molly said, you know, the resolutions, they really do set us up for failure. And if we only have that limited amount of willpower to do these things, we're never going to be able to do these things all the time. So focus it on things that you have also been a little bit successful with already, that you're already doing somewhat well. And then it is more likely that these are going to be more in line with things you will stick to, right? Rather than like, you know, I'm, I'm somebody who eats meat all the time this year, I'm going to not eat meat. That makes no sense, right? That's obviously we're not, not going to do well at that. So just to keep it in line with those, those expectations for yourself, keep them realistic and in ways you'd like to improve and grow this year, but not that nasty R word for sure. <laughs> Well, I'm thinking the same, you know, it, when I, when I have these resolutions, I, I try to narrow my life kind of, I'm just focused on, on this thing that I'm, I'm doing or not doing or whatever, and that kind of makes, makes less space in life. But if I'm uh, looking for, I really, I, I was really inspired about the, uh, what you shared Molly about having a word. I mean, if I, if I would have uh, inspiration or growth or courage or whatever I can use it in all the areas of my life but if I'm saying I'm going to exercise five days a week and then I do it two days and I'm like I'm not doing this you know and then I feel bad about myself so I think it's much more better to choose to to focus on uh, something that can uh, keep me growing as a person I think that's great that was really inspiring uh, and I also have, I mean, when I'm thinking of resolutions, I, 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 I'm remembering, you know, all the, the promises that I was making to myself, like I was going shopping and I'm like, I'm not going to buy any sweets. Yeah, sure. When I was in the shop, I was like, okay, I'm just buying these, but I'm, I'm saving them for Saturday. Mm-hmm. And when I was in the car, I was, you know, opening the bags and trying to eat something while driving and so on. And then, okay, I'll just eat this and I'll save the next four, the the rest for Saturday. And I was, I kept breaking all these, uh, these promises that I made to myself or the rules or the boundaries that I set. So, and, and I think uh, it, it reminds me too much about that. I need to focus on uh, the positive things instead, really. Yeah, I think it's more about like creating that acceptance mindset of who you are rather than who you are not and who you don't want to be. I think that is the shift that you kind of need to make with Molly's strategy. And I love it. Do we get to know your word yet? Or do we have to wait till January 1st for the next one, Molly? You have to wait. January 1st. I can't take it. (laughs) Well, I still have to stay focused on advance. It's not over yet. Fair, fair. Giving energy there. (laughs) <laughs> but I think that's a great cliffhanger. We have to do, I, I, we have to meet again and know Molly's words. And you have to come up with one and I'll come up with one too. Yeah, right. I think it would be a great way to start the new year. Yes. I'm this will be our new year's tradition. 
Yeah, yeah, I love that. <laughs> so I think I think I can make that promise that that we'll be back next year and give a word uh, for uh, for us to grow and to stay in recovery. Thank you, girls, and see you again. Yes, thanks for having us. Thanks for having, yeah, thanks for having us again. This has been great. It's been far too long. And uh, yeah, we'll keep, we'll hold you accountable. Yeah, <laughs> great. <laughs> Bye. Bye.